The tech industry has made a lot of changes recently. We've seen a lot of different layoffs and we've seen a tightening in the job market and not a lot of people are getting jobs as they were before. So that leads me to the question, are there view jobs still out there? Is it possible to be a view developer nowadays, especially if you're brand new or if you're a seasoned veteran, are there jobs out there? So today I'm gonna give you some of tips and strategies that I would use in the job market today if I was looking for a view job. But overall, I think these strategies work for any people that are looking to get into tech or to get any sort of job right now in the economy we're in. So first question is, are there jobs in the view community? And I'll say, yes, there are certainly still jobs out there. There's plenty of companies still hiring. It's just gonna take a little bit more work for you to find them. And it's not gonna be as easy as it was in 2020, 2021, when everyone was hiring. So what are your first steps if you're looking for a job as a view developer? First thing I wanna say is don't panic. So this is really incredibly important, especially if you just recently got laid off or you know that you wanna change jobs. A lot of people, when that happens, they get really anxious, they get nervous, they panic, they may start putting out hundreds of different resumes without even thinking about what they're doing. They may take a job offer that they don't actually want. And keep telling yourself there is still a lot of companies hiring, it's just not as easy as it was before. The next step I want you to do is to put together your resume. So focus on your accomplishments. So what you wanna do is make sure that you're focusing on the things that you've worked on and the things that you've done that make you stand out from the crowd. You wanna to put together a good resume if you're looking for any sort of job because that will really highlight who you are and what you can bring. So make sure you put numbers down if you have it, if you increased a certain amount of metric, if you remember from one of the all hands that they said they have increased revenue by 30% and you're directly or maybe indirectly responsible for that, put that down in your resume. If you have any stats on, on what you did and what kind of impact you have, make sure you put that inside your resume. It's extremely important, it shows initiative. Also, don't forget keywords. You wanna make sure that you're showing uh, for all the bots that go through your resume, this is gonna show them that you have these skills. So you wanna put in TypeScript, you wanna put in JavaScript, HTML, Vue.js obviously would be one of your main keywords. Reuse it a few times in the resume. That way, if you are submitting your applications that kind of just read through your resume, that you're not gonna be rejected from it. I'm a little old school, but I think cover letters are extremely important. So create a cover letter for each application, if you can, for every place that you submit your resume to. Some of them allow you to put a cover letter, some of them don't, but be creative. You can have a template that you use for all of them, but make sure you customize that enough for each one to show and highlight how you would be uh, a good fit for their company. So don't think about, uh, don't think in your perspective, think about how you can help them. I think that's an important aspect whenever you're looking through, looking at jobs is you want to find out how you can help them, not how they can help you. You also wanna kind of think about what kind of job do you want? Do you wanna work at a small company, a large company? Do you want it to be remote? Do you wanna be in person? These are all careful and important considerations that you need to make before you start putting yourself out there. And you can actually hone in exactly what type of job that you want by kind of thinking about this before. There's also an idea that some companies are gonna act a little different. Like let's say you're trying to get a job uh, at a large tech company. There's kind of good pluses and minuses about that if you're like a view developer and you're trying to get into a large tech company. One is you. it's really important to realize that a lot of these companies like Amazon, Google, Apple, they might have a thousands of engineers, but they'll have a, probably a small team out there doing Vue.js. They might have another team doing uh, Angular. The problem is, is that a lot of these tech companies, they're not looking and their interview process included, aren't looking exactly for view developers. They're just looking for good engineers. So if you're going to work at a large tech company, you might not be placed into a team that has that technology that you really like. You're gonna really have to first do really well in the interview part, and then you're gonna have to ask the recruiter that if you pass them all, that they can place you on a team that uses view, uh, the view tech technology you want, and you may or may not get that. If I were you, I would look for a smaller company to medium-sized company that uses that technology more often. You, we'll talk about it a little bit later, but you can look up companies that use Vue, and those are probably the ones you wanna target first if you definitely 100% wanna use Vue in your app. But it's a good thing to realize that 
why do you want to use Vue? And I love Vue.js and no doubt about it, but I understand that my skills are transferable. If I know Vue.js really well, I can jump into a React code base, an Angular code base pretty quickly, pretty easily. There's very little transition. Once you learn one uh, framework or library really well in, in, in front end dev like React or Vue or Angular, you can pretty much move between the other two. Don't, get afraid, don't be afraid to apply for jobs that don't mention Vue. Uh, if you have already view in your repertoire, because it's probably not a hard requirement for a lot of these companies. It's just a nice to have. Important part two is to be deliberate in your job search. I don't like the idea of just spraying and praying. This is a technique where you send out tens of hundreds of resumes as quickly as you can to as many employers as you can and hope that one uh, gets back to you. So I like to you to personalize every single uh, application you put out there, meaning that if you have a resume, make sure you tailor it exactly the way they are expecting. Put in the technologies that they're asking for inside your resume, highlight them a little bit more. Let's say a company is looking for someone that's a TypeScript expert uh, and you've used TypeScript in your Vue 3 app, you may want to emphasize that more in your resume when you apply to them and also maybe put that in your cover letter if they allow you to do that. I would say if you are laid off or you're brand new to the tech industry, your job is to get a job. You could still send out lots of different resumes every day or every week. You're just gonna spend a little bit more time to personalize them more before you send them out. And really important too is keep in mind, like I said earlier, how do you stand out? What's gonna make someone pick up your resume against uh, 500 other people that put the resume in for the same job? If you led a, a big project, you can highlight that on your resume did any kind of speaking. Like I, for example, in my resumes, I mentioned that I wrote a couple of books that I've done speaking. I have a YouTube channel. I kind of learned in public. Heck, if you're big on Twitter, put that you have a Twitter profile with 10,000 people on there, at least something to show that you go above and beyond your job. Now we get to the point of actually looking for your jobs. We're kind of talking about it around about, but I'll give you some concrete uh, strategies and tips you can use when looking for that view job. So one is to use your network. So use your network. I would say talk to everyone you can in real life. So talk to your mom, your dad, your brothers, tell everybody you can that you're looking for a new job, that you don't have to tell them you got laid off, I suppose, but don't have any shame in that if you have to, and see if anybody knows someone else that can help you. Next is I would use Twitter and social media. I put everybody I know that I got laid off or I'm looking for a job. I make it clear that I this is what I'm looking for. And you can't imagine if you've put some effort into social media, into Twitter, and you've built up a little bit of a following, how important that is because you'll have people DMing you, recommending jobs for you. Now, LinkedIn probably has needs to have its own category. There's a lot of different strategies you can use in LinkedIn. A couple of them that I've tried is first, you can set your LinkedIn for open to work. That helps. Another is you can search for companies that use Vue kind of contact them. Usually if you can find someone with a CTO or especially if they're a smaller company, that's usually okay. Or if you can find a recruiter in there, you can contact them directly in LinkedIn. I believe you can message anybody for free if you try to connect with them first. Otherwise you might have to pay LinkedIn, which might be worth it if you're trying to look for a job, but contact the CTO, uh, contact the recruiter. Uh, or a manager there and tell them you're looking for a job, tell them how appreciative you were if they could refer you to the correct person. Uh, that always is a good idea. One caveat here is don't be a stalker. So obviously if you message someone and they don't get back to you, maybe message them one more time, but then cut it all off. You don't wanna be the person that's messaging someone every day or every few days, then it kind of looks really bad. So use your judgment here. Obviously, if you don't feel comfortable messaging random recruiters or managers or CTOs from a company you wanna work at, don't do it. It's okay. Uh, I would not be too aggressive on this. I wouldn't message employees to have them contact their manager to see if there's positions open. Don't do that. And also, if you do look in LinkedIn and you find a company you're interested in, maybe check their website first, see if they're hiring before you maybe randomly message them uh, because that could be possible. That might not be a, a you might, that might be the official way to apply for them. Another good idea is to try local meetups. I was just one at one at one called Code and Coffee in New York City. And right at the beginning of the meetup, everybody lined up in a circle 
everyone introduced themselves and mentioned who they were looking for, like if they if their company was looking to hire anyone. And they're also people who were looking to get hired told everybody who they were looking for and allowed this kind of networking effect where people who were looking to get hired could get talk to people who are looking to people to hire. So it was really cool. And you'll find out a lot of local meetups will do this. Now, I've looked recently at some VIEW meetups. Usually there is a VIEW meetup at every major city, but a lot of them still haven't come back since COVID, unfortunately. If that's the case, you may want to see if there's a online meetup that you can go to. I, it's also, there's a whole bunch of, um, and I'll talk about this in a little bit, there's a whole bunch of communities you can join too. So if you don't have any local meetups in your area, you may want to look online. I'd also wouldn't be too, if, if I really needed to, I would spend like a half a day. If I have a car, just travel somewhere for two or three hours. Like I'm in Reno, Nevada, so I can go to the Bay Area. That's only three or four hours away. Maybe I just make a half day of it. I go to a couple of meetups in the Bay Area, and then I, uh, I either spend the night there or drive back that night. But it might be worth it just to connect with people who are looking for jobs. And I could also be like, hey, I'm only looking for a moat. So that might be well worth doing, especially if you can't find anybody locally in your area that are hiring. You may want to look at some outside referrals too. So outside your local networking and meetups, you can join online communities. I kind of hinted at this before, but you can get join like Blind or there's a bunch of Discord communities or even a Reddit community. And if you can find some of these communities, a lot of times they have job boards in them or I know the View Discord community does. Uh, I've seen on Blind, you can just ask for companies that you're interested if anybody would be willing to give you a referral. Referrals are great things, especially at like mid to large size companies because employees are incentivized to find good candidates because they usually get some kind of hiring bonus if they can get one of their friends to get hired. So if you can go into one of these communities, say, hey, I like XYZ company, can I get a referral? Oftentimes someone will respond back. You can message them, send, you can uh, apply for somewhere. They can make sure they can get a referral for you. Some people don't like to do this unless they know you really well. So you may have to talk to whoever you're asking to get a referral from, tell them your background, like really sell yourself. So that way they feel comfortable referring you. There are a ton of view specific job boards and really for any technology, if you looked at React Jobs or Angular or just front end development, I'm sure you'll find some job boards. I just did a quick Google search and I found these. I do like View Mastery, so I would check out View Mastery's job board. I believe the View School has a job board too. You can look through there. Viewjobs.com, madewithviewjs.com slash viewjobs. And then if you look in Twitter, they have a Vue.js job as well. So this is another thing you could do if you're on uh, Facebook or LinkedIn or Twitter or threads. You can start, at least not threads right now. I think their search isn't great, but... At least on Twitter, you can search for Vue.js jobs and you can see some through there and start applying. Usually these are very specific Vue jobs, so they're looking for people who have Vue experience. So you'll need to make sure you have that. And then there's just general job boards you can look at. I think Indeed is probably the most popular, at least in the United States, but I've heard of Monster and quite a few others. If you look at job boards, you can just go through them. Uh, be aware that there are sometimes scammers on these boards where you'll apply for a job. If you apply for a job and they ever ask you to send a check or they're going to send you a check to buy things, be very wary. There's a lot of scams that I hear about, especially software developers who think they've gotten hired somewhere. The next thing they know, they're going to a website to purchase a bunch of things and then they find out that they're, the website's completely fake or they receive a check which they cash and then they're told to send back the difference and it's just a big cast uh, scam that they're supposed to use to like pay for equipment. So be very wary of like jobs or that are too easy to get. The last two I want to talk about is you can always try to do some freelancing. Uh, there's Upwork, Fiverr, Lemon.io, Gun.io. There's a ton of different uh, ways you can just freelance out there. I usually say the best way to do freelancing is to find real clients that are local or real medium to large size companies rather than going through a third party service like this. What you're going to find in things like Upwork, it's kind of a race to the bottom. So the people that are getting the jobs are probably the ones that are outside the United States that have much lower rates or the ones that are in the United States, they're kind of undercutting each other to get these jobs. 
So you never want to be in the situation where you're getting, you know, $10 an hour to build the next Facebook website and you're putting in all these hundreds of hours or getting paid literally $500 and spending 50 hours on something. So you're better off trying to build relationships with companies, uh, have them come to you is probably a good, better way than you going to these freelance sites. And then you can pay a recruiter. A lot of recruiters got laid off. So if you can find one that maybe is freelancing that's that you can pay to help you find jobs, they'll do a lot of this hard work and legwork for you. You can give them your resume, give them your cover letter. They'll contact employers. They'll send your information out. Leave a comment below if with your thoughts. I'd love to hear it. I also have a newsletter below. So if you click on it, I can give you some tips on view, on getting a job, places like that. Also, I have a LinkedIn Find me at Eric, Eric Hanchett, add me as a friend, add me, you know, follow me. And if you want to learn more about Vue.js, I have this video here. I think that'll really help you out.